International's Adoptee Only Chat featuring Samantha Fruderman and Jenna Ushkowitz, founders of Kindred Adoption. My name is Charlie Cotter, and I'm one of the current, current co-presidents of China's Children International. Hi, I'm Lainey Allison, and I'm one of the other co-founders of China's Children International. China's Children International is one of the first support and networking organizations created by and for Chinese adoptees. As part of CCI's Adoptee Only Chats, we have initiated a guest speakers program to invite influential figures in the adoption community to speak about their inspiring work. Every month, we host a live streamed video chat over Google Plus and YouTube with a reserved amount of spots for our members to listen to our speakers' stories and engage in productive dialogue. We then share the video with our community. In this way, we hope to inspire further leadership and effective, productive dialogue within the international community. This month, we're extremely honored to welcome Samantha Futterman and Jenna Ashkowitz, founders of Kindred Adoption, a nonprofit organization that aims to provide international domestic adoptees and their families, both adoptive and biological, with services such as travel, translation, and support for those who wish to reunite. Easily accessible hotlines, introduction to art, and encouragement of artistic expression, and programs set in native countries to aid orphans living within the foster care and government systems. Um, and a little bit more of personal introductions of our distinguished guests. Um, they can talk more about themselves too, but um, Samantha Fruderman is a Korean-American adoptee. Born in Busan, Korea, Samantha was adopted by a loving, a loving family in Verona, New Jersey through Spence Chapin Adoption, uh, Adoption Services and the Social Welfare Society. She was raised by two older brothers, her parents' biological sons. Samantha began performing during her childhood and continued to pursue her talents while attending high school at the Professional Performing Arts School in New York City and eventually graduating with a BFA in Theater Arts from Boston University. In 2011, Samantha moved to Los Angeles to further her acting career. Her entire life changed in February of 2013 when she discovered that she had an identical twin sister. This remarkable experience ignited a desire in Samantha to explore the world of adoption by assisting fellow adoptees and their surrounding communities. Growing up without the insight of other adoptees, she wanted to share a positive outlook on adoption and explore the ways in which family is deeper than DNA. Um, Jenna Ashkowitz is a Korean-American adoptee from Seoul, South Korea, who was adopted at three months old through Love the Children Adoption Agency. She grew up in East Meadow, New York, with her parents, Brad and Judy Ashkowitz, and an older brother, Greg. As a child, Jenna worked in the entertainment industry, acting in commercials, Broadway, and television. She attended Holy Trinity High School, known for its prestigious theater program, and graduated from Marymount Manhattan College in 2007 with a BA in theater performance. After performing in Broadway's Spring Awakening, Jenna landed a role on the hit show Glee in 2008 and moved to Los Angeles to pursue her dreams in television and film. In 2014, Jenna was approached by friend Samantha Futterman with an amazing story on her own adoption. Knowing that not all adoptees had the same comfortable experience as herself and Samantha, the women felt compelled to take action by creating an inspiring resource for other adoptees so they know they are not alone, no matter what their personal journey has been. Awesome. Um, okay, so I guess we'll jump right into questions. And um, again, um, for any of the CCI members, if you have a question that you want to jump in with um, or that you want to add or steer the discussion, or Sam and Jenna, if you want to talk about something different, then just ignore what I'm saying and talk about what you want to talk about. Um, all right, cool. I guess the first thing is that if there's anything that you got, uh, you wanted to add to your personal introductions that we didn't cover. Um, um, no, you guys did a really good job. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. Um, and I guess we'll talk first on um, Kindred, if that's okay. Um, and we're wondering if you can talk a little bit more about what Kindred Adoption does and um, how it works. So, you know, we're, we're always evolving, kind of, we're brand new, we're in, it's, we're in our infancy still, um, but we, we want to act as the main hub for adoption, so if anyone has any question, they can um, come in and, and uh, we could be the first stop shop, basically, and we can spread them. For instance, we have a lot of um, Chinese adoptees that write in, and we automatically um, send them to you. So, uh, whether or not you know that, actually, I think we have to, <laughs> we have to practice our communication better, um, but we always recommend um, CCI as a a good resource for them. And you know, it's it's an open thing that we um, 
offer a lot of options, and then they can choose to act on whatever they um, would like to. But mm -hmm. you know, we're we're having our first gala April fifth in New York City um, to get the word out a little bit further to get some more support and um, we're really looking towards launching this hotline it's 24-7 um, so anyone from the greater adoption community not just adoptees or, or um, adoptive parents but you know siblings of children of um, can write in at any time for whatever they may need um, and our, our nonprofit called the Kindred Foundation for Adoption is a full title and the website's kindredadoption.org if, if you're interested in looking at that <laughs> And we'll also put a link in the in the description down below. So yay. Um, okay, awesome. Anything that you wanted to add, Jenna? Um, I mean, that, she got it for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, and I guess would you, if you wouldn't mind, um, would you mind talking a little bit about how you guys got started with Kindred Adoption and what inspired you um, to uh, to start the foundation? Sure. Um, you know, it sort of came. It, birth, it was birthed out of the Twinsters documentary. When Sam came to me asking uh, for an executive producer, um, I said, "What do you need? What else do you need?" And she said, "I really want to start this foundation." And I said, "You know, me too. Great." So um, it just sort of was like this compelling feeling because of also the outreach um, from the Kickstarters from Twinsters. Um, there were people just that. We're saying thank you for representing us. Thank you for shining a light on adoption. Thank you for you know just even talking about it. My glasses are fogging up. Um, just talking about it. So it, it was uh, something that we said. I think this is needed, and I think this is necessary. So um, you know we got all our papers and sort of just literally launched ourselves from there. We decided to do our first event in three months in, four months in, um, just to raise awareness. Really, it was truly the idea behind that and just get people sort of talking about Kindred at all. I'm sweating. So it's Sorry. warm in here in LA. You guys. <laughs> the Santa Ana wins. It's warm for us. Sorry. <laughs> and we also have, oh, we have a question from Twitter coming in. Um, are there still tickets available for the Kindred Gala in New York City? Yes, yes. there are. It's on our Eventbrite. Um, it, it's on our Facebook page. It's probably actually the easiest way to find it. Um, so it's facebook.com slash kindredadoption. Um, and and it, the link's up there. So there are definitely still tickets available. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. And, yeah, and I was wondering um, whether, if you, whether if you thought there was any way for... CCI members to get involved in Kindred Adoption or help out, um, if you might be able to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. We're always looking for volunteers, especially local volunteers, because we're hosting events for, in, for in, example, oh my gosh, for example, in New York, um, we need we need volunteers at our event um, through that night, um, and, and this happens probably twice a year we'll be doing things, mostly in LA and New York at the moment, um, but hopefully spreading out into other cities as well. So we definitely need on-site volunteers, um, but also you can sign up on our website, kindredadoption.org, um, and be a volunteer for other things like writing in. We love blog posts. We love to hear your stories. We love to share your stories um, because that really helps us further the community and create a strong, stronger bond. And also cross-culturally, it's really great. Like as a Korean adoptee, I'm I'm always interested in hearing from Chinese adoptees or from domestic adoptees or other international adoptees because it just, I don't know, I feel like it gives a good reminder that we aren't alone and that even though there may not be someone right next to me all the time that I have so many different uh, communities to reach out to. Um, so we love hearing stories um, and then once we go into our hotline we're going to need volunteers to, to be there um, answering calls. Um, which we'll have training and stuff to do, and, and we're not quite there yet, but, but we definitely need volunteers for that, plenty, plenty of volunteers. So. That's awesome, and I'm sure I speak for CCI that I think anybody would be willing to help out. Um, it's a, it sounds like a really great uh, foundation, um, and we're really excited to kind of work with you guys and <laughs> watch you grow. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and I guess was, was there anything else that we wanted to talk about on this topic or any topic um, generally around Kindred Foundation, or is there anything that you wanted to add? 
Yeah, I mean, we're always, we love hearing from different organizations um, of adoptees. You know, we're not trying to recreate the wheel. We're just trying to create um, a space and community where everyone can come together for whatever is needed. So, for instance, when you reach out to us, we are so excited. Um, and any other type of small organizations for adoptees, we'd love to hear from. So if, if anyone has other ones that they refer to, um, we'd really love to connect with that as well, with them as well. Okay, awesome. Um, and I guess I can open it up to the floor. It would be great now to have some questions from you guys, um, if anybody wants to share. Anybody? <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, so when you started Kindred, how was the support from your, what support did you get besides one another um, to create such a foundation, um, your parents' response, as well as the rest of the adoptee community that you've reached out to? How has that all been so far? Um, you know, it was interesting for me. It was really that I, I hadn't really tapped into my uh, roots or into the adoption community, really, until Sam sort of came out with her story and, um, you know, shared it with the world, and then I sort of felt ready to um, think about it and, and talk about it. Um, so my parents were actually kind of surprised uh, at first, and that's, you know, it, it's interesting because I've never spoken about it. I've never wanted to search for my birth parents. I've never had that feeling. So when I came out and said it, they were like, really, where did this come from? When did this happen? Uh, but the support, of course, is always there. I'm not going anywhere. They know that. Um, and uh, they were actually really thrilled that, that that was something that is just able to even spoken about and, you know, addressed at this point now, too. Um, but growing up, I had a great experience anyway, so that wasn't the issue. Um, I mean, it's also quite interesting. It's not just the adoptee community that we've reached out to. It's anybody who I've spoken to about Kindred has said, I know somebody who's adopted. Uh, my sister's friend. You know, it, it's anybody. It's such a broad um, community because I think people are just touched by um, everybody's stories because they're all so different and they're all so unique. And that's the idea behind Kindred is that, you know, if your story is positive, negative, whatever it is, it's okay. It's just that we want everybody to know that there is somebody there out there who has felt something like it and that we're here for them. Yeah, for sure. It's hard to, you know, coming from Twinsters and coming off of that, everyone's like, well, uh, we, we've heard some response like, well, um, that's just like wishy-washy or like it sounds so happy and not every not everything is like that. And that wasn't the point for us to say like this is every example of everything because, uh, I mean, even between my sister and I, we had different experiences as adoptees and with Jenna too. So I, I don't know. We're trying to just create um, a hub where everyone can come in and, and share that and just know the idea is to know that you're not alone. If you feel negatively towards it, if you want to stop it, if you want to, um, I don't know, if you want to continue it, whatever it may be, you're going to find hopefully with, within us you're going to find someone else who feels the same way that you can just have a connection with so yeah 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 no that sounds uh, really great and it's good that you both have very supportive families and are able to yeah we're that really journey. <laughs> sorry Ming did you have a question um, that you wrote in the Box. I don't want to put you on the spot, but oh yes. Um, well, my basic question was, what's the best mode of communication to Kindred, whether it be um, Facebook or its site? So I was just wanting to know, so other people can know how to contact you all if you have if they have questions or if they just want to post a blog or you know, um, just basic communication. How does that work? I would say right now through the website is the best. For sure, um, because that's it, how I, I don't know. I guess it's the um, easiest for us to manage. Mm -hmm. um, we're Facebook, you know, we're still building it up and still seeing what we're gonna do, and um, we're open to suggestions too. You know, we we had our own blog, and now we're trying to think maybe we'll just move it onto Facebook and have it be Facebook posts instead of its its separate entity. But um, I guess right now, yeah, I think the website is the best option, and then pretty much gets filtered Facebook. straight to us and a couple of our, you know. Trusted volunteers. volunteers as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Great, thank you. Yeah. Awesome. I'll give a kind of slight pause if anybody else wants to jump in. 
Um, but if not, um, I have some other questions that we can kind of generally talk about. Um, so I think for adoptees, a lot of times a question uh, questions come up about identity um, and identity either as well for us about Chinese or um, what another kind of nationality um, and kind of where do you fit in between um, these two uh, nationalities and how you see yourself like kind of shifting between them. Um, so I was wondering generally kind of whether we could you could, might be able to talk about how you relate to your um, Korean American adoptee identity um, and generally maybe what you think about your or relationship with Korea, um, or generally how you've like explored, I know that's a lot of questions, but kind of uh, explored those sort of facets of your identity uh, construction. It's a, it's a lot of questions, but it's all, <laughs> it, 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 it makes sense. sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, and, and for, I don't know, I think for every adoptee it's a big thing um, to say like who we are, and, and it's it's hard to say like, oh, I'm stuck in the team. I feel like for me, every day it's a different, I have a different relationship with it. For one day I'll be like, I am so Korean, I'm so proud, like I am eating so much beef, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And then other days I'm like, wow, especially, you know, with my sister, when I'm when I'm in France, I'm like, I am 100% American, and I know it. <laughs> And then um, other days I feel feel Korean, and um, I don't know. I, I think the main thing now is over the past few years realizing that I don't have to be one thing or the other thing, that I can just be myself and uh, just be like Sam, I guess. <laughs> and and I can be a little bit of everything, and that's okay. And, and um, if one day I feel more Korean or when I go to Korea, I really, really love Jenna's. I actually haven't been yet. Um, but I, the first time I left Korea, I, f I left with a great sense of pride that, you know, that blood runs through my veins, whether or not that uh, whether or not I actually um, connect to it or I could see myself living there. Um, I still, I, I'm proud to be from Korea. I'm, I'm proud to be who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, how do you feel about it? Um, it's interesting, I, I, you know, growing up in such a, a white household, um, I was so American. I'm so American, it's crazy, and then I'm so Korean. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I, I find myself as, th this is how I look at it, I'm Jenna. Um, I'm a hundred different things, but part of that is that I was adopted. Um, growing up with such a positive outlook and such a, um, a good experience, it never really occurred to me that I was one or the other. I was just the girl. I was Jenna. She was with the Jewish last name. And mm -hmm. like that sort of like... At the Catholic high school. Yeah, at the Catholic <laughs> high school who celebrates Christmas. Um, I, but you know, more than ever, like because of my career and because of the fan base that I have gained, it's been kind of amazing to see all of these... Um, Asian Americans come out and say, I'm Asian American, thanks for representing us, it's really great for you to be out there. I forget, like I forget, um, because I'm just playing a character, I'm not playing the Asian girl on the show, I'm playing Tina. So um, I'm reminded of that, and so it, that kind of makes me like, oh wow, that is that is really cool, I can do that for other people. And I really didn't know what Korea was like until I saw it in Twinsters, truly, like, and see, like, saw some, a really personal experience that made me really want to go and made me really proud. And again, like, Sam being the hero in the movie of just saying, like, this is who I am and, and this is okay, and um, it made me, it reminded me again that, like, we are these people for others, and that's, like, such a gift. Um, so I guess that's, uh, you know, a lot of things in one, again, but that, you know, I kind of identify myself, like, Jenna. Yeah, a mishmash. Mishmash, yeah. A mishmash. Or a salad bar, a smorgasbord. <laughs> um, I have a quick question um, after hearing what Jenna had to say about um, her identity and then being a performer. So both of you are actors, and as um, Asian Americans, I mean, you don't see many Asian Americans in entertainment, especially um, in the film and television industry. And I think, personally, the fact that you both are adopted, I, I think that's very cool as someone who is adopted to see someone else adopted on the screen who has a similar, might have a similar ex personal experience. So how do you feel, um, I know there's typecasting and because you're Asian, I mean, off people, the industry might typecast you. So how do you feel in representing 
uh, either an Asian American or a full Asian. I mean, um, Sam, I know you are in Memoirs of a Geisha, so you played someone who was Japanese. So how do you feel about um, representing Asian identity, whatever that may be, in a specific um, film or television show? Yeah. I mean, when it comes to something so cultural like playing a Japanese character, I mean, hopefully as a Korean-American adoptee, actor, hopefully I can represent uh, someone else's culture truthfully because that's the whole point. Um, and, and, and it is hard. I mean, there is typecasting and I feel like Jenna and I, we, we go out for the same parts a lot of the time. We're never really up for the same things, roles, right? but, but we go out for the same roles and a lot of them, you know, it's a lab assistant or like a cop or something like that. And I was talking to my, my Asian American <laughs> actor friend last night and he was saying the same thing. Um, and it is frustrating. And when we were growing up, we didn't really have anyone to look up to. It was just like Sandra Oh, really? Yeah, and then, Lucy Liu. Yeah, and Lucy Liu. <laughs> um, and so that, that was always hard, I, I think. And it still is hard. And every day, Jen and I are texting. We're saying, "This is ridiculous. This part's ridiculous. This is offensive." Um, mm -hmm. And there's like, I remember one character. I said, "Well, she's just she speaks four languages, plays like piano and violin, and is mad because she's getting bad grades." I was like, "I, I, I was like, I refuse. Yeah. This is not gonna happen because it's so it, it's so offensive, and it's like what people think or assume that an Asian American person is." And there's so many different types of Asian American people and um, and adoptees, of course, and everything. But hopefully now is the time where we're coming on Jenna and I'm trying to develop our own stuff to, to come out to the world and um, see some, I, I don't know, hopefully we will see uh, Asian American actors yeah. in the forefront. But I, how do you feel about and like being on Glee? It's, it's about interesting it? because Glee was a, a specific experience because, um, you know, a lot of people don't know, like, Tina Khan Chang, her last name came from the fact that it was Jenna Ashkowitz, and they wanted to create a Jewish last, Asian last name for me. Um, so it's kind of funny. Yes, we know that Chang is not Korean, and I am, so that's fine. Like, I get it, but, um, you know, what? I am part Chinese, actually, you guys, just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's something about it that sometimes you have to look at it as the most sincere form of flattery, and sometimes you have to say no. That's how I've sort of seen it. And, like, there are times where we say, you know, we've read the script and say it's so on the nose and it's so offensive that we're not, there's no way we're going out for that. And then there's some that, you know, actually do, um, are okay and, and are the one Asian that you can be. Yes, I'm going to make that choice and I'm going to go out for it because if I can represent again, I will. Um, but it's also interesting because in the last few years in particular, uh, there's been a lot more... Um, ethnicity on TV that you've seen in, within each show. Um, and then there's also, like, it's interesting because you see shows that are so uh, direct focus towards an Asian family, um, which I don't know that I necessarily always agree with. Like, Fresh Off the Boat is great, but, like, you know, there's some that I don't I don't always agree with that because why can't we have an interracial family? Why, why can't that be an adopted girl? Or why can't there be more than one Asian person on, on a show? show? There can only be, like, one Asian friend on the show, and that's really frustrating. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. great. There, there's two. There's us. <laughs> and we're friends, and we're Asian, <laughs> and that's not weird for, uh, you know, yeah. people. But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's, been, it's been hard, and we know that, you know, going into the industry, like, if there, our parts are limited. And so... Um, it's hard because the more of us there are to represent, the happier we'll all be, and obviously that'll be good, but um, you have to know the, that's probably going to be harder because there's ten times less the amount of roles for us that are out there. So it's just a sort of a but it's changing. Give and take game, yeah, and it's yeah, changing. It is. Hopefully, and there's some like I think there's like a there's a bunch of adoptee projects I feel like that are coming seen, out that yeah. are really great and really really great and they really pay tribute and um, do justice towards adoptees and I think that's a bit beautiful amazing thing. It's a time for adoptees. It Before it's all about adoptive parents and Hollywood adoptive parents and that's amazing. That's a really really great thing especially in representation of interracial families. Right. But now it's a time for the adoptees are now of age to come out and start speaking about their own story and, and be represented um, in their own voice and that's like, that's so cool to watch yeah. happen. I've also, I mean, like, I feel like Kristen Jenoweth also, who is, like, a big ambassador and advocate for Kindred, she was adopted as well. And, um, you know, I feel like her coming out and, like, there's a few other actors that have come out in the the light. I think it's, um, it's happening. It's slowly happening, but it's happening. Thank you.
yeah, that's really insightful and good to hear. <laughs> And also, I have a question for Sam, if that's okay. Um, I guess on the topic of uh, adoptees coming out and uh, sharing their stories, um, I saw Twin Sisters and I really liked it. Um, and I think it was really great to have. Um, I think that was one of the times when adoption has come like the closest to like mainstream media. Um, that and then for Chinese adoptees, there was also um, a Summer Between, um, which came out a couple of years um, earlier. Um, and I was wondering whether you may be able to talk about your experience in like, and because I know you were also in, heavily involved in like producing and just like generally um, directing the project um, and what your experience um, was like um, with Twinsters and like the general uh, like. Um, I guess the feedback that you're getting from the people that you were working with. Um, yeah, I mean, well, Jenna was really, really involved too. Um, I guess after shooting when you mm -hmm. came on, um, but I, I mean, it was it the entire time when we were working on the documentary. We said, well, we need to make sure that this is an adoptee story and is told properly. We had a, a lot of um, th there was there was an opportunity to go with like a Hollywood team and have someone like come in and produce it. We're like, no, because you're going to make this dramatic and not make it honest and what, what it is. And we don't even know what it is yet because it hasn't happened. So we wanted to tell everything as truthfully as possible. And um, that was the one thing we kept reiterating to our team. Um, and our team is family now. You know, it's Canola, Ryan, Jenna, <laughs> myself, um, Jeff Consigli, who's our editor. And we all go to dinner. We all hang out. We're really, really family. Um, yeah. And that was a, a big thing for us. And I I remember doing the edit at one point um, on our third act. I, I said to Jeff, you know, this isn't actually there's there's a message that's not being said, and, and it's about the adoptees' experience and and experiencing it together and having communities. Like, oh, okay, yeah, and he's like, I didn't understand that, and going back in and then kind of figuring it out and seeing where it is. I actually saw somewhere between um, and Jenna Cook, who's a a character in somewhere between. She was at uh, Ica that year for um, the Korean. Korean adoptees and she was there, I remember saying, you know, she wanted to develop something like this for the Chinese adoptees and develop that community because um, the oldest adoptees are about our age, I yeah. think, from China. So um, that was really cool. And, and you know, it, as an adoptee, I, I was able to ask myself questions that I'm not sure I would have ever been confronted about during the process. Um, and, and asking my sister questions about like how do you feel about adoption and like I had to really think about it which I don't know if I would have done and then like Jenna and I would talk about it and, and stuff like that so it was um, it was pretty amazing I, I felt good about being an adoptee and, and bringing the film to the forefront I guess because I think there were things that need to be said and need to be represented in a way that wasn't overly traumatic or anything and going in and even in Korea um, we're actually premiering in a few weeks over there but I had screened it at the Busan International Film Festival and they said to me we've actually never seen a positive outlook on adoption it's always been the traumatic story of two of families being torn apart but we've never seen the happy side of it and and due to you know whatever the whatever happened with all the adoptions and there's a lot of issues behind that and a lot of sad history that is behind that as well but to think that maybe um, the minds can be changed and positivity can come out of it is a huge thing mm -hmm. and that's like I always like cry by now but like I always cry when I talk about it <laughs> it's overwhelming and something that we never thought that I never thought I would really care about or be interested in not that I was against it but it um I don't know it, it helped Bring to the forefront, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was almost therapeutic in a way to do the documentary and, and to be talking about all this stuff all the time and really evaluate and meet all these other adoptees and see um, what's going on and that's our kindred. I don't even know if I'm giving you an answer. No, I'm just kind of talking. It's good. <laughs> um, yeah. But, oh, yeah. no, yeah, that's, that's totally, that's totally uh, really interesting. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Any? Oh, so I have a... I have another question. Um, so, uh, I guess coming or going off of what you said in terms of how the documentary um, kind of allowed you to ask questions and kind of uh, reevaluate certain aspects of your life and so forth, um, I was just wondering how do you both individually um, balance out, you know, com uh, encountering, say, a stranger or even a friend that you haven't seen in a while who all of a sudden says, oh, wait, you're in that movie, and, you know, I want to know everything, and they want to know it in basically 20 seconds or so. Um, and 
even if they didn't see the movie or they just know um, of you from you know growing up and so forth, how are you able to kind of navigate the countless questions that you received in such a short amount of time? Because I know that on a personal note, it I've struggled with that um, just because I feel overwhelmed by the countless questions, whether it be um, mainly from non-adopted individuals because um, I feel that if an adoptee asks me a question, I am more than happy to answer it. But if it's someone who's not adopted, sometimes I feel it's a bit of a, um, a reminder or almost a shock to have to kind of relive or revisit a memory. And I understand that some of or most of the questions that ever come to me are, you know, of good intent, so to speak, not as a means of trying to hurt my feelings. But I understand that as I've grown older, I'm trying to better kind of um, strengthen myself so that I'm not kind of left, you know, on the side of the social circle of um, utter frustration or even sadness or, you know, being upset. So mm -hmm. I wanted to know on your, you know, in your own opinion and experiences for yourselves, how mm -hmm. are you able to kind of discover, you know, um, the balance of answering questions or being able to say, um, actually, uh, I'd like to pass on that question. It's a little too personal right now, you know, because you two both are, you know, you're not like, you're experiencing adoption, you know, day to day. So, um, and we are, you know, the experts, so to speak, in our own experiences. However, from individuals who are non-adopted, um, the expectation can be quite high. And sometimes it's um, unbelievably frustrating at times. So I just wanted to know from your point of view how you do that or how you go about it. Thank you. Um, I guess in my experience um, I've always just assumed either people know and I forget um, but I've almost created like this little thing for myself. They say what's your name? You say Jen Ashwitz, right? You say yes I know. I, I'm the Asian Joe. <laughs> I was adopted when I was little, and um, I was brought to you know American. I usually the the next question is, do you well? Do you want to, have you found your birth parents? Do you want to do? It? I say no. I've never felt that. I'm actually really happy. Um, it's almost creating this uh, tiny little monologue for yourself that sort of stops the conversation where you want it to stop. Um, you give them the information that they think that's it. That's everything, and then you keep the rest for yourself. Um, I think that's important because as open as I come across there's a lot of the guarded is just for me you know what I mean it's there's nothing wrong with it I know that it's just it's reminding yourself that like you have full control over what people know and what people get from you at all times in life just period so it's like yes I was adopted you know I had it was it was a very interesting experience like that's it it was really great you know this is this this is that whatever it is um, because you know obviously there's like people will say well, you don't want to search for your birth parents? And like, I don't know. I'm not sure. In 10 years, maybe I will. But like right now, I don't know. If you, and it's fine, of course, yes. Most of it comes from good intent. Like most yeah. of the people aren't looking to make you burst into tears or make you feel bad about yourself. But that's something that's personal to you and your experience. So, and that's okay. But again, it's like, I don't know if that helps, but it's, it's just giving people enough that it's there. And then I think it's okay to say also if they go a little farther and say like this is a conversation for another time. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know? There's totally like it there's times where it feels like an ignorance issue where people aren't really aware of your feelings and it feels like a really ignorant question. Like I would never walk up to someone with a scar and say, Where'd you get that from? Like <laughs> how's it healing? Like have you gone to the dermatologist yet? No. Like no one I would never do that, so why is it okay for someone to say that to me? Um, but again, like it isn't from good intention. So it, sometimes people will say like, "Oh, well, you're adopted," to, like so they just gave you up, and it's like, "Well, okay, maybe you don't know, under fully understand adoption at all, and then maybe it's an opportunity for me to change that or something." So say, "Well, now, like, um, I, I feel like I was given up out of love, but maybe some other people do feel that way, you know." And and just it's it's hard because it is so personal, and like mm -hmm. I've had. People come up, they're like, have you found your mom yet? And I'm like, no, but um, like, I don't even, I don't know you. <laughs> um, and, and um, 
even now with the documentary, I feel like people come up and they feel like they know me, and um, it's hard because I don't know anything about them, and I'm open to sharing. Like, we could talk about it. Obviously, I've given myself that joke, but someone came up to me, she's like, that's a great documentary. I was like, whoa, you're touching me. I was like, that is abrasive. Um, but, <laughs> but it's also a really great thing because the, the story and the message is getting out there to people who may not have ever been able to, I don't know, hear about it or experience mm -hmm. it, and I think that's a really great thing. So always reminding that there is something better, but just like Jenna's saying, there's stuff that we can keep private to ourselves, and be proud of how you feel. So if you don't feel comfortable, be like, well, I don't really feel comfortable answering that. It's kind of a personal topic, and be proud of that and say that, and then that's okay. I mean, if I was crossing a boundary and someone was uncomfortable, I would probably want them to tell me. Yeah. You know, yeah, if I'm, I'm asking so sorry. questions, be like, oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> and I feel like I've done that before. Um, sure. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is hard to deal with because it's it, at times it can feel yeah, yeah and feel aggressive and and like someone's crossing the personal space. We've all felt that way. Yeah, yeah. but I don't know. It's you've gotta just I know keep keep going and know that we're all here and we've all felt that way too. You know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. I'm not taking wine at Any, other. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Um, it's clear. That's what she wants to Um. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think. Yeah. That's um. Really interesting. If we can kind of switch gears, although we can always come back to this kind of topic. Um. I think another interesting thing, although this is sort of personal, so like share whatever you're comfortable sharing with, obviously, in the spirit of what you were just saying. Um, I guess one question that we got um, was it, uh, approaching topics on adoption with family. Um, so, for example, either birth parent searching or identity, um, and whether you feel like, like your family can, like, how you can connect on those topics where maybe your family doesn't totally know where you're coming from um, and what your experiences have been, have been with that. So as much as you want or as little. Yeah. I think growing up, my, my parents had always told me that my birth parents loved me very much and just couldn't take care of me. So everything was given up out of love. And they read me this book called The Mulberry Bird and, you know, all these other, like, whatever adoption stories they could tell. Um, so they're always really open to it. And when I said... My mom gave me the pamphlet about going to Korea for the first time before I met my sister, and there was options to meet your foster parents and your birth parents, and she was like, are you going to do that? And I was like, well, I definitely want to meet my foster mom. And then I was kind of hesitating on, on the birth parent stuff, and she, my mom was always in full support of it, and my mom was like, I want to meet her and say thank you, because without her, that my mother would have never had me um, and had gotten to, you know, I don't know, raise me for... 20 something years and, and um, she was always really supportive about that but even now I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever had a sit down talk about it except for when I was doing the documentary and that was a great venue and, and therapeutic in a way because it allowed me to do that in a safe atmosphere with a purpose but otherwise I'm not sure if I would have ever sat down and really said um, I want to do this because of this. How do you feel about it? You know, it was just that moment like, do you want to find your birth mom? And I was like, is that okay? And she's like, yeah, I think that's a great thing. I want to meet her. And that was the extent of the conversation. But in those, I don't know, four sentences of exchange, there was so much, um, there was so much in that and so much love and positivity going through that that I think um, it was a, I don't know. I always felt really well supported. And I, I've never had this conversation with my brothers, actually. Um, about it, uh, and I obviously I talk to my sister all the time about anything. <laughs> um, so we'll talk about that every once in a while. Um, but it's not like a main thing, or, or like I've never really had like a really heavy conversation about it, except for you know during the documentary with my sister, and, and I was lucky in that aspect. But um, I I haven't done my bird search. Um, I started it. And then when Twin Sisters happened and South by Southwest happened, it was like a crazy 2015. Um, I had to like stop, and Kindred too, of course. I had to stop and say like, this is not the time for me to be doing this. Um, I didn't have a twin that reached out that immediately catapults you into a world where you're just like, you know, you, you handle it. Or, you yeah. know, um, it's definitely something eventually I think I want to do. I just have to be ready for it. I, and I don't know if I am just yet. 
um, I think there's a part of me that just is just go, go, go right now and so focused on so many other things and taking care of other people, which I, I love doing and um, as a part of who I am. But I think there will be a time where I'll say, like, okay, I think now is it, and I'm just waiting for it. So, um, you know, and, and my dad, when I originally said I wanted to start the search, I had to ask him for some of my papers and the agency in Korea. And um, he was like, why do, you, why do you want that? And I, you know, I said, I, I just, you know, I think I'm going to, ask. I think I'm just going to see like how far it takes me. And he's like, okay, whatever you need, whatever you want. So it really hasn't been a huge conversation for me either. Um, they always just say like I was their gift, their little gift. Um, and that, you know, as long as they know that I'm loved and cared for that, and I do feel that way um, with the hundred families that I have. Um, from like the Twinster family to my, you know, my parents and my brother to, you know, all the theater families and Glee family that I have. Um, but yeah, no, there hasn't been any huge conversation. I'm sure that, you know, if the time comes that I do contact somebody or find somebody that, that will be something that has to sort of be addressed in some way. Um, it's a scary It's thing. so weird to think about. And Every I know different. the result will be fine. Do you yeah. know, like, whatever it is, like, I've just, I've accepted that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, and Even not finding out. It's right. Okay. Yeah. It's just whatever. Yeah. Every day is different. Yeah. I feel like. Every day is different. Some days I feel like I would be so ready today. And then <laughs> the next day I feel like I would not be ready today to deal with any of this. And we always forget. I mean, people who have stories that we've heard, so we've had um, a lot of adoptees who have had successful birth reunions, and um, you know, one of the stories was, well, we forget as adoptees that it's not just about that moment, that it's about developing this relationship and having a life after, and that there is a lot of things that had happened and had gone into the adoption, so, um, and we have to make sure that we're prepared for the good and bad side of the situation. I mean, from my sister in my case, I mean, it's it could possibly be really bad. You know, we, we of course believe that everything was given out of love, mm -hmm. and I still believe that, and it's not fair for us to judge some choices that somebody made 28 years ago and say that you're the same person now, because if someone said that about me, I'd be, I'd be pretty sad. Even five years mm -hmm. ago, I'd be like, you're the same exact person you were then, and the decisions that you make now were the same ones that you made then, I'd be like, well, that's not fair because you, we don't really know each other. You don't know what I've been through. So I, I feel like, I don't know, things things change all the time. And, and so it's those days where I'm like, I don't know if I'd be ready to hear something bad today. Right. You know, but if I did, I think I'd be able to handle it. And I have this community. I have Jenna. I have my parents. I have my brothers. I have Anais. I have her, her parents. Um and that I know I'd be well supported enough to be able to handle the conversation. Yeah. Um, but there's also parents that aren't open to when their children come to them and say, I'm looking for this, and I'm looking um, for my biological family. And I think I, I can't imagine really what that experience would be like if my mom said, why, why do you want that? You don't need that information. It's like, well, I, I am the adoptee, and I do have a right to the information. And, of course, like I... I think it's about more than just us. It's not just mm -hmm. about the adoptee. It's respecting um, your birth parents and your adoptive parents and everyone that loves you and surrounds you. Um, and I think we do have to pay respect to everyone and, yeah. and consider their feelings because it's not just about us. But we do have a right to know. And, and just because someone says, um, no, you you shouldn't care about that, it's like, how dare you tell me how I should feel? <laughs> yeah. It's just how I feel. So. Yeah, I don't know. Do, what else? No, I, I just think um, thinking about like even when I had asked, I had asked Sam like, "Hey, who do I contact to give my papers to?" And our, you know, one of our board members, Ben Summers, uh, helped me with it. And she, she said, "Be careful though, because sometimes if you give your papers and your information, they'll give you back all the information without you even asking for it." So I was thinking about that, and I was like, wow, if I really had, I, that's what put me to it, like a screeching halt, and I was like, I'm not ready for all this information yet, if I were to get it. Um, but yeah, there's something about, I think, preparing yourself, and then also um, knowing that if you were given something, a twin or information that you weren't ready for, like, that's what we're here for. <laughs> that's where we're, why the community is, is 
becoming so strong right. is to remind ourselves that we, we do have yeah. the people to to support you and, and get through whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, I have a quick follow-up yes. to everything you've discussed. You guys covered a lot. Um, <laughs> and I definitely agree with your statement that it is difficult to approach your parents about um, searching. Personally, I've been searching for about five years, and it was really difficult it, uh, when I told my mom, I have a single mother, that I wanted to look because it's very out of the blue, just like Jenna, like, didn't even talk about adoption really before, and then all of a sudden I wanted to right. find my birth parents. And it's the difference between feeling as if you're um, not grateful for them having adopted you, but at the same time, your parents have chosen to adopt a child, and that child is going to become an adult and become their own person, so they should have the right to feel how they do. Um, but I know the Korean adoptee circumstance is very different from China um, for the Chinese adoptee community specifically. Ours uh, is the bulk of the one-child policy. So there's a potential that we have biological siblings. I personally believe I have like two, two if not more. But um, have you thought about the fact that, I know, um, Sam, you have your sister, but Jenna, have you contemplated beyond the biological parent aspect of meeting them um, and reuniting with them the fact that you do have siblings, potentially? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Your feelings on that? I mean, ironically enough, like a very close mentor, one day said to me in high school, like, there could be another Jenna walking around. You have no idea. That was the first time I ever thought about it. And then it came true. And I was like, well, maybe there is another Jenna walking around. That would be so fun. I um, saw her at Big Bear. You saw Jenna's yeah, doppelganger. I had a, I had a Bear, mom's doppelganger. Could be my sister. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, the first thought to me, that's less scary and more fun than um, and more of a less daunting I think experience, um, like if I go to when I go to Korea in the next year, um, I I do want to find my foster mother and and try and see if I can contact her. Now along with that comes like does she know something about me that I don't know that am I ready for? But also um, I think the siblings I I have thought about that, um, and I think that to me is just way more of an easy sort of thing to say like. Yeah, let's let's contact and let's see if there's somebody that's related that had some sort of experience that maybe we could share. Um, but I haven't done it yet, and again, it's you know all a matter of time. And um, you know the thought process that I have is um, I don't want to reach out unless I'm ready to continue a relationship, whatever that may be. If it's that we don't continue a relationship or we do. Um, you know, it's just the future that goes beyond just the first contact. So, eventually. But yeah, I have thought about it. Sweet. I think, um, Beth Ann, did you have a question? Um. Um, yeah, I wanted to address mental issues um, because I think it's just, like a really serious topic. And, like, I don't think it's talked about enough nowadays. But, and I've, like, come to find that many adoptees that I know, like, experience, like, depression or anxiety. And, like, if I may ask, like, have you ever experienced it? So, yeah, that's my question. I personally have not um, had any sort of... I, I, I have spoken to people, and I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that everybody in the world should be speaking to somebody because it's. I think it's definitely um, a part of our anatomy and our makeup to sure. share and, and talk and understand why we do the things we do. Um, but I have not personally had any depression or anxiety. Um, but I, you know, we do encounter people who, who do, and that, that's a much, obviously, um, more serious issue that needs to be handled by professionals that are not, um, that's not our uh, work specialty. our specialty, well, we but have we have people that we can link. Yeah, to. exactly. We have um we have contacts, and people have approached us actually about it and said, you know, in creating your um 
hotline as well, you know, to prepare for something like that. We definitely want to be um, well equipped because that's not something that I think anybody should be just be handling, obviously. And we take example from the Trevor Project for the LGTB community mm -hmm. um, because they deal a lot with suicide hotlines and, and more so, I think, than our ours will deal with. But mm -hmm. um, it is something that have, people do encounter. I mean, and um, I mean, there's been times where it's like I felt anxious, but not for reasons of being adopted. Yeah. I don't think. Um, and again, like I mean, I'm sure over in the U.S., I think it's more common to be open to speaking to a therapist and, and to be talking to somebody about something where I know um, in Europe it's more difficult and it's not ex Cultural necessarily, acceptance. yeah, it's like I said to someone would be like, what are you crazy? Like why, why, why do you have to talk to someone? But um, like Jen is saying, we're, you know, like we're pack animals, right? Like yeah. we have to, we have to um, converse, but we've definitely encountered this a lot, I mm -hmm. think with adoptees and um, personal friends of mine have definitely um, been through this a lot, and it's something that I don't think is, uh, in, in my friend's personal experience, um, is not solved yet, and um, is continuing, and it's just kind of day by day kind of dealing with it, and it is hard. I, I guess there is a chance where, where I feel like, oh, well, there's always the question of, like, why was I given up? And I think that can be something that can easily drive us down, and... Um, to that, especially, I know a lot of adoptees find out that they're one of many siblings, and maybe only one was given up, and it, it's a that can be a really that can Mental feel drawing. really bad, <laughs> yeah, and and be like really traumatic, and I think that um, that's a totally I don't know acceptable emotion to have yeah. when hearing news like that, um, and know again that you're not alone, and and this is a feeling that a lot of people have experienced before. Um, yeah. And that it's not, we don't have all the answers. No, but we should address it. You know, there's yeah. a, there's definitely something to addressing it. It's like anybody who, I had a friend who had um, this condition, and online, if you, like, I know it sounds so funny, but, like, you Wikipedia or Google it, and I'll say, like, these celebrities have this disorder or this condition as well. And for some reason... My friend said, oh, well, they all have it, so it's okay, which is so crazy. And I say, like, you know it's okay. <laughs> like, you're allowed to have it, and you're, yeah. it's fine. Like, you shouldn't be relating yourself to a celebrity, but at the same time, it, it is something that says, like, if we bring awareness to it and we talk about it, it becomes more acceptable yeah. for some reason, you know, and, and sure, like, we are pack models and we should speak about it and, and support each other, and that's why we have support groups, and that's why we have, you know... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's my, my close family friend had a brain aneurysm, and it was really difficult for me to go through, and I sat one night, and I was reading forums, support forums, because I was so sad about it, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't know anyone else who had really like, been through something so severe, and it had been my position, because I wasn't... You know, I'm not... I'm not her daughter, I'm not anything like that, we're just really close and I just didn't know how to handle it. So I went online and I read support forums for like three hours and that really helped me just to know that like, or just to hear the things that I was thinking and have someone repeat it back to me without my asking, I think that, I don't know, it, it really helped me in a way and I think it's hopefully, yeah, it's comforting and that, that's what we're trying to provide hopefully and just that connection with other people who do feel that way. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. So I guess if are there any other questions that you guys want to jump in with, um, Kimberly or Jasmine, not to put you on the spot, but if you have a question, um, it's the floor is for you. <laughs> um, and feel free to interrupt me if <laughs> if you want. Um, but yeah, I guess if nobody else has any other questions, um, we'll kind of turn to. Um, uh, wrapping up um, with a final topic, um, which I think um, a lot of a final topic that I think a lot of us at CCI um, are interested in, and it definitely I am personally very interested in also um, is and that's the international adoptee community um, and generally like uh, whether that be how, however you defined it like the Korean adoptee community or like the larger adoptee community at large or um, just generally um, adoptees, um, and I think that. I think people definitely see um, you guys as 
leaders of the adoptee community um, and kind of, or maybe like spokesperson, spokespeople. Um, and I was wondering whether you thought, um, if anything, um, that we have any sort of responsibilities um, as kind of leaders of the community um, and how you see that kind of shaping the future of um, how we all interact with each other. I think it's nice to hear that we would be seen <laughs> as leaders of a community because the truth is that we're just part of the community yeah. and that I think it's important for us all to remember that we don't know all the answers and to always be open to new things and hearing new things and um, just continuing to connect and, and have that all the time because there's it's this community is evolving so much. I mean, now adoptees have children and their children are having you know, identity things and stuff like that, and it's it's always changing. So I think we have to always remind ourselves to keep an open mind. And, like, Jen and I really respond when we hear everyone else's stories. We're really moved because it gives us insight, too. So this is, yeah. we're all here in it together, and no one has, like, the right way or, or anything. I don't know. I yeah. thought every day we hear, I hear something new that's inspiring. Oh, absolutely. Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, the more. Sorry, sorry, no, random. No. I was at um, an event and someone said something that I've never heard before. An adoptee said, I was always scared to join the adoption community because I thought that the one thing about me that was special would no longer be special anymore. Hmm. That being adopted was her special thing. Huh. And I was like, that's really interesting. And I feel like maybe when I was a teenager, there was a time where I had felt that way yeah, as well. Me too. Um, interesting. But. Because I, I didn't have a lot of like friends who were adopted. adopted. And it's always weird to be like, oh, are we supposed to have a connection or what, what is this? And it's like, it, I think this girl nailed it on the head and said, you know, that, yeah. that was totally the feeling. And um, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it ever since. But um, Yeah, I, I think there's a, definitely when you said the word responsibility, that's the way I look at it for all aspects of my life when, you know, I'm my – a new niece and I have like you know friends who look up and say you know I look up to you and that's a, that's a responsibility and that's a gift so um, you know the, the most important thing for, for me personally is like when coming into the community and being called a leader or you know whatever it is um, I think it's just that we have a voice and we get to represent the people who don't get to do that quite as much as we have and uh, the outreach that Sam and I have so to me, it's the responsibility is that I I want to make sure that I people know that I'm representing and trying to make sure that it encompasses everybody and that it's not just my experience and that I'm not saying like all the adoptees have a wonderful experience and a positive experience. I just want people to know that like I we know that and and I'm going to share that with people that we we don't all we, every story is different and every story is unique and. Um, every experience is is their own and it's personal and that's okay so um, I don't know if I answered the question at all but yes it is a responsibility and yes we um, we don't take it lightly that's and if, the idea. yeah and then we want to stop anyone from having a negative feeling that we've been through if we can share our experience to make sure that you know that you're not alone mm -hmm. and that we can stop that in any way. Like when we put the blogs out and we get celebrities to talk about this, it's so people who may be asking those ignorant questions no longer have to ask those anymore. Right. That's why we're sharing our stories and that's why we love hearing other people's stories because it it changes. It, mm. it It's an education in a way we're all educating each other about um, how to, or what's normal and what's acceptable and how we actually feel when someone asks us questions that aren't, I don't know. <laughs> Good. We're still learning. We're still <laughs> learning every day. So. Yeah, but we love it, and it's inspiring to hear people's stories and to you know connect with you know you guys who already have something so wonderful established. It's it's just becoming aware of it and saying like, okay, now let's you know connect and make it even bigger. Awesome, great. And unless there's anything, any last minute things that anybody wanted to jump in with, um, we'll wrap it up here. Um, I wanted to thank everybody so much for coming and a huge special thank you um, to Sam and Jenna from Kindred Adoption for joining us today. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Kindred Foundation, please check the link 
please click the link on the video, um, and we'll also link, link the, vi the website uh, to Kindred Foundation um, below in the description. Um, and again, this has been a guest speaker chat uh, held by China's Children International, one of the first international support and networking organizations created by and for Chinese adoptees. The, site to our site, uh, the link to our site will also be in the description, um, so if you're interested, um, please check you out. Check, check, please check us out. Um, thank you. Um, so thank you again for tuning in, tuning in, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, and